Welcome to Electron Line. Now we've learned in the past few videos that if a vector field is indeed, and maybe I should put a little arrow on top of this, so that we know that's a vector field. If a vector field is conservative, then the gradient, then there must be a function f such that the gradient of that function equals the vector field. In other words, we have here a vector field, which I believe in the previous video we showed that it was indeed conservative, which means there must be some function f such that we take the gradient of that function, we should get back this vector field. All right, let's try to figure out how to do that. So the gradient is this right here in the parentheses, so we take the gradient of this function, and that should equal the vector field. We yet don't know what that function is, that's what we're trying to find, we're trying to find what that function is. So we know that if we take the partial derivative of that function with respect to x, we should get this quantity right here. And if we take the partial derivative of the function with respect to y, we should get this back. Again, we still don't know yet what that function is. That's what we're trying to find. So what we can do is we can take this quantity right here and take the integral of both sides only with respect to x. That's basically the reverse of a partial derivative with respect to x. We now take the integral with respect to x only. So if we do that, we take the integral of this with respect to x and the integral of this with respect to x. I'll put a little x underneath like this. And of course, we probably want to put a little dx over here so that we take the partial derivative. So the partial derivative of this with respect to x gives us back the function. And that will be equal to, so this will then become 3x plus, and this will become 2x squared divided by 2 times y. And then we should also add to that a potential function, let's call it g of y. A function that only is a function of y because if we now take the derivative of this with respect to x, this will simply go away because it acts like a constant. So we have to account for that. Okay, so now we have a representation of what that function may be. Now let's take the partial derivative of that function with respect to y and set it equal to this and see what we get. So we're going to take this quantity right here. Now we're going to take the partial derivative of that, the partial derivative, with respect to y of f. And let's do that right here. So this is the partial derivative with respect to y of the quantity 3x plus 2x. Well, actually, the 2's cancel out. So I can simply write x squared y plus g of y, like this. And if we do that, we get the following. Well, this will go to 0. This will give us x squared. And this will give us plus the derivative of that function with respect to y. And then we know, of course, that this must equal this right here. So we can set that equal. So this must therefore be equal to x squared minus 3y squared, which means the derivative of that function of y has to equal negative 3y squared. So therefore, we can conclude that g prime of y must equal minus 3y squared which means if we now take the integral of both sides with respect to y, from here we can now conclude that therefore g of y will be equal to the integral of this, which will be equal to minus 3y to the third power divided by 3, which is equal to minus y cubed. So now we realize that the function we're looking for is equal to this plus g of y, and now we know what g of y is. So from here we can say that f is equal to 3x plus x squared y and then minus y cubed. And to make sure we did get the right answer, what we can do is we take the partial derivative with respect to, let's see here, with respect to, where am I? Ah, here we go. I guess I, I kind of wrote over it. It's probably a bad habit to do that. So I'll rewrite it here partial with respect to x of f is equal to 3 plus 2xy. So if we take the partial of that with respect to x, we should get this, which is this quantity right there. And if we take the partial of y with respect to s, f, we should get this, which is equal to that. So let's go ahead and check to see if we got the right function. So the partial of f with respect to x is equal to, well, that would be 3 plus 
2xy, and that goes to 0. And is that the same as what I started with? The answer is yes. And then if we take the partial of that with respect to y, see what we get? So this goes to 0. This would be x squared. And this would be minus 3y squared. And did I get the right answer here? And the answer is yes. So I verified that I did indeed get the right function. So the answer again is, if this is a conservative vector field, then there must be some function of x and y such that the gradient of that function equals the vector field, which means this must equal this. Now we're trying to find what f is equal to. We do that by taking the integral with respect to x of this, which will give us the function plus some unknown function of y. Then we take the partial of that with respect to y. We get this. And then we solve for g prime y, because we take derivatives, we get g prime. We solve for that. And then we plug that in. And then we do a quick check to make sure we got the right value. And that's how that's done.